So in this video, I'm going to show you how I set up this character using layer parenting. So as you can see inside this symbol are all the symbols that make up this character and each of these symbols are all on their own layer. So before I even start using layer parenting, I want to edit the center point of each of these symbols because by default the center point, which is represented by this little white circle, is always in the direct center. But naturally, as we know, body parts don't always hinge at their center point. We want to move the center point so that these arms and legs and other body parts all rotate in a more anatomically correct way. So just go over to the toolbar and select the free transform tool or hit Q on your keyboard. Now when you click on a symbol, you'll see the white center point in the middle. So you can see when I rotate the symbol, it's rotating based on where the center point is in the middle, which isn't going to work. So let's click and drag it to say more towards the hip and give it a little test and rotate it as far as we can. But we can see this might not work so well. So I'm going to move it a little bit more there and give it another test. And that looks pretty good to me. So repeat the same procedure by clicking each symbol and editing that center point so that each of these limbs and all these various assets of your character are going to hinge correctly. What's really important is to do this first before you create any additional keyframes and start animating. So the first step is to convert all your objects to symbols and then edit the center point of each symbol. Now the next step is layer parenting. So click the show parenting view icon in the timeline and this will open up the layer parenting view in the timeline. And now this is a pretty simple character. The next step is to determine what is going to be your parent symbol. And for this character, that parent symbol is going to be the torso or the body. And that means that all of the other symbols will become children of the body symbol, which is the parent symbol. So I'm going to click on a leg and it's going to highlight the layer that the leg is on. And knowing where these layers are, I'm going to click first on the leg layer, which is going to be my child layer and drag it to the torso layer. And instantly the hierarchy is made so that now the leg symbol is a child of the torso, which is the parent symbol. So repeat this procedure for all of the other child symbols by clicking on the layer that they're on and dragging it to the parent layer. So now with all of my layer parenting done, I can just click on the parent symbol, which is the body or the torso and click and drag it around, reposition it. I can use the free transform tool to rotate it. And I can also move all of the child symbols independently if I want. And so with all this set up, the fun part comes where we can start animating. So I'm going to go down the timeline and click and drag vertically to select a range of frames across all these layers. And then I'm going to hit F6 on my keyboard and that's going to insert keyframes. And in this frame is where I'm going to reposition my character by clicking and dragging him down out of view at the bottom of the screen outside the stage area. So now what I want to do is apply a classic tween to all of these layers. And the easiest way to do that is I like to click and drag diagonally from the top layer to the bottom layer. And this creates a big highlighted region. And if I right click anywhere over this highlighted region, I can then select create classic tween from the context menu. And that applies a classic tween to all these layers in one fell swoop. Now with this highlighted region still selected over what is now my classic tweens, I can go over to my properties panel and in the tweening section, if I click on classic ease, that'll bring up a menu allowing me to select ease in. And then I'm going to double click on cubic and this will apply the cubic easing in to every single one of these tweens across all these layers. And now you see when we play back our animation, our character starts falling and gradually increases speed. And this simulates gravity and it gives the animation just a little bit more realism. So that's the basics of layer parenting, and it's a cool new tool for Animate CC that will greatly increase your animation workflow. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how to use classic tweens. This character is comprised of a bunch of different body parts that have been converted to symbols. So all of the assets that I've drawn to create this character are done using object drawing mode. But in order to animate first, what we need to do if we're going to use classic tweens is to convert every object into a symbol a graphic symbol. And to convert an object to a symbol, go to the modify menu and then convert to symbol. And then in the convert to symbol dialog box, give it an appropriate name. And then the type of symbol we want is graphic. So use the drop down menu to select graphic if it isn't already selected and then hit OK. And now you'll see our object has been converted to a symbol. But the next step is to grab the free transform tool or hit Q on your keyboard. And you'll notice the white dot in the center. That's the center point of this symbol. When I rotate and scale this symbol, it is all based on where that dot is. 
So what we want to do next is edit the center point location so that this object will hinge naturally. So for the ear, I'm going to move the symbol to where the ear connects to the body. And now you'll notice when we rotate and scale and skew the symbol, it'll look and act more anatomically correct. So repeat the same procedure for all of the other objects that your character has. Once every single object has been converted to a graphic symbol, you're ready to start animating. In the first keyframe, I'm going to move the character out of frame. So I'm going to click and drag the parent symbol, which is the body, and all the child symbols are going to follow. So if I click and drag to highlight a range of frames across all these layers, then I can right click and select Create Classic Tween. And this will apply a classic tween to all of these layers. Now while this highlight is still active, I can then go over to the Properties panel, click on Classic Ease, and I'm going to choose Easing Out and Cubic as the curve. And what this is going to do is just apply a nice, soft easing out to the character. So as it reaches its highest point, it slows down to simulate gravity. So now that I have basically the whole motion down, I go back into these layers that have tweens, and I create keyframes on various layers to then alter what happens uh, to some of these symbols. And here I'm going to take the ears and just move them down. I want the force of gravity to play or have more of an impact on on the symbols themselves. So here I'm just rotating the character a little bit on frame one. And you'll see now what I like about this using this procedure is being able to scrub the timeline and getting sort of a, an immediate feedback on what's going on in terms of how these symbols are reacting to how I'm rotating them and uh, positioning them. So here I am at the very bottom or beginning of the animation. I'm selecting various smaller parts of the character and rotating them. Because what I like is this overall motion, but I also like lots of individual, smaller, fine-tuned motions uh, that are happening. And so, again, I'm, I'm making adjustments, going back in to certain layers, and creating additional keyframes just to play around with the timing of, of certain aspects of this character. And having the tweens already present allow me to scrub the timeline again once I make a change and get feedback visually on what is happening. And it doesn't mean I'm making um, all the right edits as I go. It's a lot easier for me to make an edit, play it back, and see if it works or not. And if it doesn't, I make adjustments. And so that looks pretty good to me overall. So what I want to do now is have the character fall back out of frame. So I'm going to actually insert an equal amount of frames and create keyframes across all these layers at the end of my animation. And then I'm going to move the character back down off screen. I'm going to select a range of frames across all these layers. And then over the highlighted area, I'm going to right click and select create classic tween. And then again, like we did before in properties panel, choose easing in and the cubic curve. Um, and then what I want to do is create smaller motions within some of the limbs. And so here what I'm doing is I'm going to convert the leg symbol into another symbol. Therefore, I basically am nesting a symbol inside a symbol. And here I'm going to actually take the center point and move it so that the leg hinges properly. Now inside this symbol, I'm going to animate a looping animation. So the easiest way to do that is before we even apply any animation at all, just go down the timeline and hit F6, and this will insert a keyframe that contains the same exact contents as in the previous keyframe. So now we have basically bookended this timeline where we have the leg in exactly the same position in both of these keyframes. Now we're going to apply all our animation in between these keyframes, and this will ensure that the animation inside this symbol is going to loop perfectly create a few more additional keyframes. And what I want this leg to do is kind of wobble back and forth really quickly. So after applying a classic tween, I can get a sense for the timing of it. And I want it to be a little bit faster. So I'm going to remove a few frames in between these keyframes. And that's going to get the leg to kick um, back and forth much faster. And so once I feel like I got it to a good place, I'm going to repeat this entire procedure for the arm as well. Again, creating additional keyframes, adjusting the artwork, Selecting an area across these frames, right-clicking over it, and creating a classic tween. And so back out on the main timeline, I'll make a few more adjustments as I'm doing here with the ears. Um, a little bit of rotation here as the uh, characters touch to descend. With the full effect in place, you can see how fun and easy it is to work with classic tweens in Adobe Animate CC.
In this video, I'm going to show you the Asset Warp tool, but more specifically, how to use it to deform and animate a single bitmap image. So I'm going to import my bitmap image. It's an image of an inchworm that I created using Photoshop. So now the next step is to select the Asset Warp tool. Just click here in your toolbox or hit W on your keyboard. And I'm going to make about five or six uh, handles using this tool by clicking directly on the bitmap itself. The mesh is detecting just the artwork itself because this bitmap has a transparent background. And so I've added uh, six handles here, as you can see, and that should be plenty. So here in the timeline, all I need to do is simply click on another frame and hit F6 to insert a keyframe. Now I'm going to start animating by moving around these handles and even rotating them. You can see here if I hover along the outer circle that's dashed, I can rotate and further deform the bitmap. So let's make this inchworm walk. So I'm going to move these handles in a way that um, represent how an inchworm or a caterpillar would walk. I want a little further down the timeline, I'm going to insert another keyframe and continue by pushing and pulling these handles to make this little character walk. And so just to show you how that looks. Let's go and I'm going to apply a classic tween. And while we're at it, let's add a little bit of easing. So I'm going to click in the properties panel where it says classic ease. I'm going to select ease in out and quad will do. And then just continue the animation. And so now just create more keyframes and continue animating. So here's the completed inchworm walk cycle, if you will. And overall, I'm pretty satisfied with it. So let's take this to another level. In Photoshop, I took a photo of a praying mantis and edited the parts so that they were all on separate layers. And then I imported that Photoshop file into Animate CC. And here are all the layers that make up this praying mantis. And then using the Asset Warp tool, just as I had done with the inchworm, I created handles. And using these handles, I went ahead and animated this character. And with a couple of other photographs that I shot, I placed him within a scene. So whether you're animating vectors or bitmaps, the Asset Warp Tool is a really cool new addition to Adobe Animate CC. One of the best things about the Adobe Creative Suite is the compatibility between applications. And now we can introduce to you a direct workflow between Adobe Animate CC and After Effects. So here in this Adobe Animate CC document, I have a very short four to five second long animation. It was all hand drawn with the paintbrush tool using a video track as reference, otherwise known as rotoscoping. But I want to give this animation a little bit more of a hand-drawn feel or apply some sort of effect to it or different effects. Effects that go beyond a vector-based animation program. So the dancer is on her own layer. And the other three layers are just some additional effects that I have added in. And with my animate document saved, I'm now going to switch over to After Effects. And so now I'm in After Effects. And with a new After Effects project, I'm going to go to File, Import, and I'm going to select my Animate CC dancer document. So for import preferences, you can choose the same folder or a different folder. And if there's audio present in your animate document, you can check this box. I will not since I do not have any audio with my animation. And then click OK. And so now you'll notice in After Effects in your project window, we now have a folder called dancer. If we expand that, you'll see that each of these layers has been converted to a Swift file. And now we have a new composition created called Dancer. And if we double click it, 
we can play the timeline to see our animation take place. And now our After Effects timeline is set up exactly as our Animate CC document. All the layers are there, intact, and we can play our timeline to see the animation play. I'm going to import a background that I created using Photoshop. I'm going to place that on a layer behind my dancer. And now since I have the freedom of these assets all on different layers, I can apply various effects to them. So at this point, you're only limited by your own imagination. You can add various effects and styles and generate any kind of effect you want because, after all, this is After Effects. So I just wanted to show you the ease and convenience of an Adobe Animate CC to After Effects workflow. So here I'm using effects in After Effects to give my animation or my brushstrokes that I created originally in Animate CC more of a real media feel. This was a quick and relatively simple example, but it shows the limitless possibilities of the workflow we now have between Adobe Animate CC and After Effects.